Hey Trumpeters, uh, my name is Charlie Porter and uh, it's been a while but I'm uh, going to share just a little bit today about how to work on your high register and how to make the high register easier and more efficient and basically more like the middle and lower registers. Uh, it occurs to a lot of people that you know they have problems as they start going into the upper register but those problems don't just immediately come out of nowhere. Uh, if you haven't watched the straight line approach and the three compressions video that I, I've done, check that out because there's there's some helpful information in there. But if you're practicing and you're trying to to expand your range, then one of the things that you can do right away is as you're going up higher, don't play louder, play softer, or at least keep the same uh, dynamic. But try going softer as you go up higher, and as you do this try keeping the same setting as you have for the lower range. The only thing that really needs to move is going to be the very middle part of the embouchure called the aperture, that little hole. In fact, what we're, what we're trying to do is just basically keep that hole from popping open. As soon as that hole comes open, as we force a lot of air through the lips, then we're going to lose the focus that we need to play higher. Playing higher isn't necessarily harder physically. It's just harder in terms of coordination. It's like throwing a basketball into a basketball hoop versus throwing a basketball into a swimming pool. Now, if you consider the harmonic series, as we go from the lowest notes to the highest notes on the trumpet, we have a lot of room for error down low because the intervals are really wide apart in the harmonic series. As we go up higher and higher and higher, the harmonic series becomes smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of the distance between the notes, which means we have to be more exact in how we're slotting those notes and how we're focusing on those notes. So, for example... Take a low note, like a low B flat. Now I'll try to play the B flat above it softer and in the same position as the low B flat. What's going to happen when you do this is that the lips, as you back off the air, the lips are going to come in a little bit naturally on their own. You almost don't have to do anything. And of course the tongue is going to come a little up a little bit, like when we whistle. I'm really not tr trying to change my setting at all. Now I'm, I'm going to do the same thing and go up to the next uh, octave. And as you see, I'm just trying to keep the same setting. Whatever change is happening, I'm not trying to do a bunch of change here, you know, uh, with the lips or anything like that. The change is very small, it's happening on the inside, and basically I'm trying to rein the lips in. I'm trying to get them to focus smaller and smaller, and at the same time, I'm just uh, lifting the tongue up. But I want to emphasize that I'm not thinking putting the lips together tight like that. In fact, basically by backing off the air, my lips are starting to come together naturally as much as they need to. Now once I get up to that high B-flat and I've established that low B-flat setting, one way I can work on range at this point is to then keep that B-flat and then go to the C, to the D, so on and so forth, going up the harmonic series, trying to make as little change as possible in the setting, like no change, uh, in fact, in the setting where, where the mouthpiece is on the lips. That does not change. But as little possible inside where the aperture is uh, as possible as I'm going higher and higher and backing off, not going louder, because if we go loud at this point before you've built coordination, if you try to go loud, that requires stamina, and if you don't have coordination, stamina is not going to help you. You have to establish coordination first, get the notes, and then you can learn to play louder on those notes. So again, starting down low, getting the setting, carrying that setting all the way up. And then from there, start to move around, go up very slowly. So you see right there, I missed one of the partials. So I'm going to go even slower and back off as I go higher. So by playing this way, you can actually start to find where those those... Um, I guess what you call the note slotting. You can find where the notes slot on, on the harmonic series. And check this out. 
one of the things that most trumpet players do, and they don't even realize it, is they're putting in way too much effort. They're trying to slot a note that's like an octave above uh, in terms of effort. So really, it, it doesn't take much effort at all. If you consider how small the distance is between a low C and a C sharp, well, once you're up higher, a half step is even smaller feeling than it is down there. Now imagine if you were to use a lot of effort to go from C to C sharp, if you went you'd get some kind of crazy skip uh, like that. Well, it's the same thing, except upstairs when we're doing that, if we use way too much effort, usually what we get is an air ball or we just get no sound at all or we get some kind of crazy distortion. So just remember, it's a lot less than you think. You have to just uh, pretty much try to stay on the same note and make the smallest movement you can. So... And eventually you want to be able to connect them all into a straight line, such, such as uh, what I just did now. And remember, these high notes, if you're, if you're getting them and you can only get them loud, then you're not getting them efficiently. If you can get them softly, then that's something you can grow into a, a nice, efficient, loud sound. Uh, the other thing, too, is to make sure that you can connect them from the top all the way down to the bottom. Because if you have a lot of breaks in between, then that means you're resetting. If you reset, then that means that when you're playing music and you're coming from a low note, then you got to go to a high note. Well, you don't have one embouchure that can accomplish uh, all those different tasks. And that's really what we want to be able to do. That's going to give us the best sound, the most uh, homogeneity of sound from, from low to high. So again, get those high notes, but make sure they're connected to the bottom. Make sure that they're soft up high and that they're nice and, and fat and big on the bottom. And let me show you one more time. So... So right there, you know, I go up as high as I can, making sure not to stress too much, not to try too hard. Of course, this is something I'm working on myself, so I try to peel back those levels of, uh, of trying too hard. So really, when you're doing it right, it should feel easy, and it shouldn't feel... I want to add this too. Don't don't put a lot more pressure as you're going higher. If you put a lot more pressure, you're going to be cutting off the, the vibration of the lips. You might feel like you need to use a lot more pressure, and the reason people do this is because they're usually blowing too loud. They're blowing the lips out, and then they got to press on the mouthpiece, you know, onto the lips in order to rein the lips back in, to press the lips in. So if we're playing really softly, then you won't need to use a lot of pressure. In fact, it'll be the same pressure as you do down low. Uh -huh. Yep, same pressure all the way down. Anyway, so there you go. Remember, uh, get the setting for the lower note. Take that upstairs. Go softer as you go higher. Make sure the lips keep a focus uh, of staying um, inside. Don't let them get blown out. The more you can keep that focus and play soft in the higher register, then you can start to develop uh, your range in a more natural and easy kind of manner. Also, there's a great exercise that, um, that Faddis gave me at one point. John Faddis plays uh, excellent trumpet. I'm sure you've heard of him. It's called the triad exercise. You simply take a triad, like B-flat major, You hold that top note out. You decrescendo and focus. Keep the focus going up to that top note, and you hold it as long as you have in terms of your air. So as you're going up, and one thing that I do is as I go up by half steps, I rest five seconds in between, go up by half steps, keep the same setting as the lower note. Don't reset your, your embouchure. If you reset, then chances are you're getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, and, and uh, that's going to cut you off eventually. So... If I started on B flat, then I would keep my setting, hold that note as long as I can, wait five seconds. All right, so eventually, say I get up here. So I'm going to hold that as long as I can until it fades out. And then I'll go up a half step and keep going. Once my sound stops, then I know that. 
I got to rest for like five minutes. Once I, once I can't get the vibration anymore. After that, you do one more time, you top it off, right? Uh, so after that, it doesn't matter how high you're going, you top it off one time and then you're done with that exercise. Um, Maurice Andre has a very similar exercise that he, uh, he gave some of his students. It's basically... <laughs> Right, so you just do uh, C, and then you do the five chord G with the seven, five seven, ba da 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 do dee, and then start on the seven going down, ba da 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 da, and then you just take this basically up in half steps as high as you can go. Same principle as the John Fattis exercise, going softer, keeping the focus as you go up higher. Don't let the lips get blown out. If the lips get blown out, then it's going to be a lot harder. You're going to have to press, and you're going to have to get a lot, a lot more air. So uh, anyway, there we go. I'm Charlie Porter, and uh, hopefully this uh, helped you out a little bit in terms of uh, expanding your range and practicing higher the right way and not hurting yourself. All right, good luck, and uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to hear some more tips and tricks uh, like this.